today from the Feeling Good Kitchen, we're making some incredible organic dishes just for you. Hi, I'm Sujai Steinhauer, and you're watching Feeling Good. I'm taking this as a personal mission. It's crispy on the outside and tender and juicy on the inside. Excellent. Stress relief with yoga expert Mary Dignan. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. My light shines to yours. Namaste. Also, Erin Lee. Is this some fancy European chocolate? Sure, it's a fancy European. Oh, no, I'm that Hi, I'm Sujai Steinhauer, and welcome to Feeling Good, the show that combines great organic food, fun, and exercise, designed to make you the very best you can be. Hi, I'm Erin Lee. Welcome to Feeling Good. We have gone commercial, ladies and gentlemen, but don't freak out. You can still make these dishes at home because we are here with professional chef Kyle Mack at the beautiful Mojito restaurant in Old Town, Pasadena. And he is going to teach us what today? I am very excited to teach you this Old Town salad. Mm -hmm. It's a salad that's special here at Mojitos. And it is wonderful. It's dedicated to the Rose Parade, which is a parade that Pasadena has every single year. For those of you that live in the cave, it's on January 1st of every year. We always watch it from home because the 31st is a little crazy. What, what makes it Old Town Salad? Tell me what we have here. Well, it's a dedication to the parade because it looks like a float. Oh, that's Absolute, fun. Absolutely, it's, uh, it has a uh, duck head. Okay, a duck looking head, not a real duck. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we're not chopping ducks off yeah. here. Well, I'm very excited to learn about this salad, but first I want to know about you a little bit. Who are you, where are you from, what's going on in Mojito restaurant? Well, my story began in 1982, okay. where I became a cook at a restaurant in Pasadena called Primetime Pasadena. Right. It was so exciting that I just took off and, and my career blossomed. And you've been doing it ever since? Absolutely. I went to cooking school. Mm -hmm. And after cooking school, I became executive chef at the Ice House in Pasadena, okay. where I began cooking for celebrities like Roseanne Barr, ah. Jerry Seinfeld, and you name it. So from that point, it expanded even more and I became a caterer to the stars. That's all the fun stuff. Absolutely. That's Every Hollywood people. <laughs> I've, everyone from Tom Cruise on down, you name it, I've cooked for them. I've also been a personal chef in the NBA. Ooh, I'm a personal chef in the NBA for yeah. five years. Okay. Had a chance to cook for guys like Kobe Bryant, Stacey Augman. Little guys. Oh, uh, little guys, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and recently I've opened uh, eight restaurants. Globally. Wow. Absolutely. Worldwide. Worldwide. So clearly this gentleman is qualified to teach us what we're about to cook right now, which is the float salad. No, what is it called? Absolutely. It's actually Old Town it's Salad. Old Town Salad. But it looks a, like a float. Yes, definitely. Very excited. What are our ingredients? Well, we have a Cuban style baguette loaf. We have garlic olive oil. Mm. Heirloom tomato. I love heirloom tomatoes. Fresh thyme. Mmm. Mm. avocados. Okay. And cherry tomatoes for the roses. The next ingredient is called microgreens. And next we have flour, which we're going to use for the breading and water. We're gonna dip something in that. Absolutely. All right. Goat cheese, mm. which is really good. And next we have panko crumbs. Okay, what's next? Avocado mousse. And if we don't have one of these little deals at home, we can just squish it up and spoon it, whatever you we're gonna do with it. absolutely can. Okay. Well, we start by making the croutons. And we do that with the baguettes, okay. which is really the simple. The Cuban baguettes. Absolutely. Oh, Cuban. <laughs> Does a and Cubano have to make Cuban bread? Well, I'm Cuban at heart. Oh, good. So, <laughs> I think that qualifies. It does. Oh, look so, at that. Don't try that at home. Don't try that at home. But we do have four slices. OK. OK, we've got our bread. The next ingredient is Heirloomies. heirloom tomato. Mm. This is going to be the body of the swamp. Absolutely. And you have to be like a creative master to make this float because those of us that are challenged at home might not be creative masters. Well, for this, you should let the creative juices flow. But if you follow okay. these directions, these simple directions, and this recipe, you'll be able to create this in no time. Okay. So first I see that you took the top off, just like, almost like a little pumpkin. Yes, I see did. See that? Okay, good. Absolutely. We can and do that. And then I'm going to start from the very base of the bottom of the tomato. Okay. Just like you this is where it gets apple. crazy for me. Okay. Uh, just like you peel an you, apple. Absolutely. But now, as you see, I'm using my thumb as a guide. Okay. While spinning the tomato around. It's very important to have a very sharp knife, correct? Oh, because yes. otherwise, we have a situation with fingers cutting. Yes. What did you 
don't peel the tomato? It, well, it, it, it tends to be very tough at that point. Okay. So it's very important to peel, to peel the tomato. Okay, yes, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes I'm lazy. Okay. Okay, so we've yeah. got our, our funky swan body. Absolutely. We're going to take, let's see. Do we, no, do, is this discarded or do we use that for something later? Well, we're going to discard this particular piece. Peel. Okay. Absolutely. We but, can eat it if we wanted to. <laughs> yes, we could. Okay. Okay, then we're going to take it. Avocado. Got it. This is a high avocado. Yes, it can be any avocado though. Absolutely. Okay. Make sure it's ripe. Ripe avocado. It. it should be soft, but not too soft. That was my next question. Okay. Soft but not mushy. It's not mushy. Excellent. That's right. Got it. So, open. Yes. And, and be very careful when doing that. Yes. I mean, it's something that. I've been not careful before. You, so. It's ugly. <laughs> yeah, well, what is this food. going to be on our float? Well, this is going to be an avocado mousse. Uh, oh, that's when, yeah, okay, Absolutely. got it, right. Absolutely. So, take this. Yes. And actually, you can turn that over. Like yes. That. And we're going to smush it up. Yes, we are. What if we want to just call it <laughs> avocado smush? That sounds good to me. Okay. So now that we have peeled our avocado, we're going to... Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Now, this is obviously a seasonal salad, right? Because avocados yes. you can't get all the time. You can't get heirloom tomatoes all the time, can you? Or yeah. Well, now you can. You know, there was a time where they were... Uh, a little more seasonal. Absolutely. Okay. But now, they're readily available. Alrighty. I'll believe you. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> so now we're going to transfer the avocado to another plate. Okay. I love that I've got to learn to do that. Don't try this at home. I'm not getting it. But I've also worked with spoons. We have to peel the little tomatoes too? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to keep it real for you guys. <laughs> this is getting a little difficult. So this is a special, special, special salad. This is for when you've got a couple extra minutes, you really want to impress your family, you want to do something nice, someone's mad at you maybe, you want to make up for something, right? Yes. And perhaps absolutely. on New Year's Day, while you're watching the Rose Parade. This is an incredible salad to watch, to, to eat during the roast break. I'm sure. How so many of these little guys do we have to peel? We have to peel two. Is there an easier way to peel a tomato or well, you just have to you do, know, it do it this way? I do it this way, but the reason why I'm doing it like this is because we're going to use the peel. Yes. Ah. Roll the tomato into the space, creating a roast. That's not that hard. I can not do that. At all. We can roll into a rose. You can roll into a rose. Yeah. Just like that. And now we're going to grill the Cuban bread for the croutons. Great, so go ahead and do that. I'm just going to stand over here so I don't mess everything up. Now, if you don't have a, a grill the way that you do over here, well, can you toast it? Can you throw it in an easy bake oven? How do we do this? Yeah, you can fancy. boil it, toast it, or use your outdoor barbecue grill. Oh, that's fine. Absolutely All right. delicious. So and you just take a little dip. Yes, I've. Um, Marinated the olive oil and garlic. Okay. Just one side? Uh, We're just doing yeah. one side, one not side. two sides, okay? You don't want it to come out too oily. Just crispy, light garlic olive oil flavor. I see that you have cut the bread not too thick, not too thin, maybe a quarter of an inch? Absolutely, a quarter of an inch thick. Okay. Otherwise, if it's too thin, it gets mushy. If it's too thick, it's. Yeah. Yes, it burns very quickly if it's too thin. Okay. So, which, of course, I would make it too thin. It would burn <laughs> instantly. Oh, look, that worked in like 25 seconds. That looks fantastic. Okay, so we've got our croutons, we've cut our veggies, we're on to goat cheese. What do we have to do with this goat cheese? Okay, now we're going to cut the goat cheese okay. into a three ounce portion. Now, that's, uh, we can eyeball three ounces, Yes, right? we can, okay. absolutely. Like so a little what we'll do, like a fistful. Yes. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is put it roll in the flour. Roll it in the flour. Yes. Okay. And then, after I roll it in the flour. So big chunks of it. in the water. Oh, okay. Just like that. All right. And then into the bread. Breadcrumbs. Yes, panko crumbs. Panko crumbs. Yes, I absolutely. I've got to remember. Now, Gourmet breadcrumbs. <laughs> So I'll just push these together. Okay, squish it all up in there. Absolutely. So this can be just a like fun this. thing to do. You yes, like to get can. dirty in the kitchen. Yes. 
And I do. <laughs> <laughs> Good, we like that. So now at this point, what okay. we do. You're forming it into like a little forming. funky thing. Yes, in fact, we're gonna form it into this little. Oh, are we thing. forming it into a head? Yes, we are. Oh my goodness. Into the head of a swan. This could be challenging for someone like <laughs> me at home, but I think it's a great, great idea. And I think you should try even if you're challenged. As with any sculpture. Yes. Or carving. It starts out rough. Or art right? at all. Or art at all. Yeah, you just work with it. Those of you who work with Play-Doh, it's very similar to that. It is. Just like it. <laughs> I mean, you can eat this one. So okay, oh look, here, it's the duck. The neck. It looks almost like a duck head. Or maybe it's here. one head. And you know, it's good to see that it doesn't work perfectly. You have to form it. It has to be hand formed. That's how we do it. I'm gonna try and do the next one, see okay. if I can hand form okay. it. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> My duck head's gonna look like a mush of <laughs> It looks like just a ball of mush. Okay. Look at it's perfect. Now, Hi, Ducky. now, the trick here is not to make it not to make the beak too thin. It should be uni somewhat uniform in size so that, and we'll dip it one more time. Now, you're dipping it in water to what? Solidify it? What is it doing in that water? Actually, this is to cause the panko crumbs to adhere. Okay. So, we'll and then you dip put more it on. one more time. Yes, okay. second coating. So now, that's funny when it goes. Real fine. Oh, form. right. See? So, so you can do it. You just went like this and like squished this. it right over your fingers. That doesn't yes, even look that difficult to make. It really I mean, it is. really doesn't. Okay, so this is the duck head. finished duck head. <laughs> and we'll insert cloves. Oh, excellent. If you don't have cloves, can you use something else? What else could you use? Not well, everybody has use, cloves in there. You can use peppercorn. Oh, look, it looks just like a duck head. <laughs> okay. Look Place at it. it. That like is that. so cute. So can you see this? How cute is that? And it's vegetarian duck head by my dad. And now what are we gonna do with the little guy? Now we're going to fry it. Deep fry it? Absolutely. Okay, so um, are, are we talking olive oil? What are we talking? No, we use canola oil. Canola oil? And it's for the purpose of making it golden. Excellent, okay. I will step away from that. That's, yeah. I don't want grease splatter. Absolutely, be very careful. Oh, poor little guy's gonna take a little bath. <laughs> He's gonna take a little oil bath. There you go. There you go. Okay, see you later. Okay. Look at how long does he sit in there for? Just for uh, about two minutes. He's bubbling. This is where the healthy part takes a little <laughs> side step, but it's okay. Canola oil, that's not bad. Not at all. Yeah. Very healthy. Okay. Okay, we're back at Mojitos with Chef Kyle Mack, and I just want everyone at home to know that I made my own duck head. And look at it, it looks good. It wasn't even difficult, and I did it. I put, oh, mine are little, it's a little cross-eyed. <laughs> but that's okay, that's what it looks like. It took me 12 seconds to make it, so there you go. Good job, Mary. Thank you very much, my beak's a little weird. So now we are doing what, now we're ready. What's this? Well, this is our perfectly paired bag red dressing. How do we make it? Delicious. Okay. Well, we add all these ingredients, Okay. And blend. There's one ingredient that you can't have. What is that? This is Himalayan rock salt. The healthiest salt on the planet. Wow. And do you have to go to the Himalayas great. to get this? Where no, I have a special find delivery. Him? Oh, I great. Oh, right, great. <laughs> great. What if you just have regular old salt in your cupboard? <laughs> well, regular old salt in the cupboard has a few problems. One, it's pre ground. Okay. And it contains anti caking agents like yellow brushing of soda flakes or many others, bicarbonate of soda flakes. Okay, and bad these, thing. Yeah, absolutely, they cause you to retain water. Oh, Not only that, that, they have many adverse effects on our body. So the plain, regular, off-the-shelf salt. Not so much. Not so much. Okay, we're going Let's to the go land. Pure. Got it. If you don't Got find it. it fresh, it's not healthy for you. Okay. Very important. Okay, does it so, um Himalayan salt? Absolutely. So now, what we do, open the blender. Got it? That I can do. Well, we'll see. For the prickly pear. Prickly pear, this is so Pure good. Now, it. can yes, you prickly pear puree. just yes, buy it already done? Yes, you can. Okay. Prickly pear is the fruit of the cactus. Yes. And as you can see by the red color that it is. It's gorgeous. Very good. Yeah, and it very makes mild flavor. I have the honey. Cocktails. And that's too. one cup of prickly pear cactus, one half cup of honey. Okay. Very sweet, mild, and delicious. And good for you, not sugar, sugar, sugar. No. Okay, no and sugar. this? That is grapeseed oil. 
Grapeseed oil. If yes. you have olive oil, can you use that or do you want grapeseed well, oil? Well, I want grapeseed oil. This okay. is a very sweet and delicate flavor. Olive oil has a very distinct flavor and not the palatable. Okay. So that is champagne fair crepe. Mmm. Anything with champagne in it. We like it. And, and now, no, please. A little, little shavings. Now, let me just feel the taste oh, yeah. the difference here. Oh, I mean, I'd like to say it tastes completely different than regular salt. So I'll say that. Oh, it is good though. It's flavorful. It's thirty times more expensive. Oh, well then it's fabulous. <laughs> that is some serious salt, people. Okay, and do I do this now? Yes. Okay, and on. Hi, I'm Mary Dignan, and welcome to the Feeling Good Gym. Today we're going to work on some balancing poses, in a pose that's going to help open up that hip. We a lot of times tighten our hips, so this is a pose that's going to help us release some of that tension. So let's start with our hands at our hearts, breathing in and out through the nose. Good. Now I'm going to mirror you. So what we're going to do is you're going to stay nice and tall out of your right leg, and you're going to place your left heel right above that right knee peeling that knee back so your legs look like they're in a number four. Good. On an exhale, we're gonna sink on back, kind of coming into a little bit of a chair, like you're sitting down. Nice, keeping that knee pressed out. So we're working on our balance, you're keeping the core strong, we're strong out of the leg. And then to challenge the balance, maybe you wanna take the arms up. Drawing the biceps close to the ears, keeping that slight tuck in the tailbone. Good, holding here. Really working, working on that balance. You might want to find a gazing point in front of you and just focus on it. Good, bring the hands back to the heart. We'll sink a little deeper and then come on up. Bring that knee into the chest and then let it go. You can shake it out if you need to. Good, now we're gonna stay nice and tall out of that left leg. Bring the hands to the heart. Go ahead and place that right knee Right heel, rather, over that left knee. Good. As we exhale, we'll sink on in. Nice. Focusing in on the breath. Feeling that hip opening the further you sink. The further you get, the more you'll feel that stretch in the hip. Good. Maybe taking the arms up. Holding here. Sink a little deeper. We're really challenging our balance now. Good. One more time, a little deeper, maybe. Bring the hands back to the heart. Rise on up. Go ahead and hug that knee into the chest. And then release it down. Good. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath. Bringing the palms to touch, really lengthening through. And exhale the hands to the heart. Good. Focusing in on the breath. Always making sure to take some time for yourself. My light shines to yours. Namaste. Okay, we are ready to plate this salad. I'm so excited. Our duck head's here, our salad's here. How do we plate it all up? Well, we start by adding a little bit of olive oil okay. and lemon juice to the lettuce. Olive oil and lemon juice. Right, we're bringing it in with just a little top. Mm -hmm. And take a look at it, it should slightly glisten. Slightly glisten. This is what happens when you go commercial. Slightly glisten. Okay, now the, the greens have been well coated. Okay. I'm so excited to try this. I'm like crazy. This is our body. Yes, it is. This is our duck body. Body of the what? <laughs> We're making a float. Don't forget. This is the Old Town salad, uh, representing Pasadena Rose Bowl, January 1st of every year. Yes, it is. Okay. Then, so cute. Okay, yeah, now we've got. The mousse by puree. The okay. Avocados. And you pureed it in a blender, in yes, a, like a Cuisinart type you of thing? You can do it by hand with a wire whip. Okay. Or you can do it in a blender. Okay. Absolutely. You, you can whip it. it. The crouton. What are those? The wings? Uh, the, they are oh, the Oh, the feathers. feathers. <laughs> Duck feathers. Yeah. Excellent. Last one. Yeah. Croutons with cute. avocado. Cute. Okay. So can... it, it might be better to place them. 
shingle pattern. Okay, shingle oh, pattern, shingle people. Like, this is our dressing. Pair of dressing on this side. Oh, look, because it's the float. Side. And where do we put the roses? <laughs> Now, the roses. Just, okay, wait, I'm gonna put one. Yeah, you put one and then I'll put one okay. the other side. Just, just like it on the other side? Yes, just on the other side. Look at that! Our wait, let's make it go down um, Colorado Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin Lee for Feeling Good, and we are back at the gorgeous Mojito restaurant. We are actually going to try one of the dishes I helped make in the kitchen. Um, it is one of the signature dishes here. It is called the Old Town Salad, and it's a tribute to... The Rose Parade. The Rose Parade. Why? Because it looks like a float going down Colorado Boulevard on New Year's Day, right? Correct. This is a duck. It's a beautiful duck. <laughs> I helped make that duck. I'm letting you know. Okay, you want to try it? Absolutely. Let's do like, um, let's do a little, I'm going to eat the nose. Eat I'll take the back. Okay. I'm going to do a little this. Forward, Wait, and you, we can, oh, and there's, okay. And what do we drink with this? Well, my suggestion would be that you do an orange mojito. An orange mo mojito. Yes, very good. and yes. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Very good. Give it a good swirl. You have to try it with the crouton on it. That's incredible, except I killed the duck. It's not really a duck, people. It's just cheese. It's okay. That's incredible. Mm. Very good. Ooh! That's incredible. Pretty good, isn't it? Oh my gosh, the orange in this mixed with... Oh yeah, okay, this is a great combination. One more. We're gonna keep eating this. You guys better go. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Feeling Good. I don't think I can give this up right here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Looking at the turkey, that's what it is for the chicken. Or whatever <laughs> it's a duck. <laughs> oh, it's a duck. Quack, quack. Okay. Right. Hi, I'm Erin Lee with Feeling Good. Welcome back to Mojito's Restaurant. We're here with Phil, the owner. We are about to try one of the dishes I helped create in the kitchen. Do you want to tell them what it is? It's a uh, duck salad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the signature salad. <laughs> no, it's an old town salad, and it's made after the rose parade. It's a tribute to our rose parade. It's a tribute to the rose parade. Okay, yeah, yeah, I better take it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're killing me. Right? All right, here we go.